I want to start with a bit of a confession. Nothing triggers my imposter syndrome like UX strategy and having to talk about it. So I was delighted when Danny said, come and talk about UX strategy. Uh, there's no need, really, for me to feel that way. Um, I'm pretty old. I've been doing UX for a long time. I run a UX consultancy. I work with lots of great companies to help them with their UX strategy, to help them become more user-centered in the way that they deal with their customers and their business. Um, I teach a course on it, and it still makes me really uncomfortable. And I'm not sure why, but I am fairly sure that I'm not the only person that feels that way about UX strategy. Uh, I'm not alone in my strategic anxiety. Uh, I think it's one of those things that everybody kind of knows what UX strategy is, or indeed knows what strategy is, but they really hope that nobody ever asks them to explain it or to define it. <laughs> I'm one of those people. So um, what I'm hoping to do is uh, explain a bit more about strategy and what it is, uh, how you get one, how it fits, how UX strategy fits with product strategy or business strategy, what the differences and similarities are, and then to give you the, uh, the framework for strategy that we use in the hope that that will be useful um, for you. So, strategy. I started looking at dictionary definitions because when you want to know what something means, that's a really good place to start. So, and I thought, I know, I'll go to Google. Here's the Google definition of strategy. A plan of action designed to achieve a long-term or overall aim. I'm like, yep, that's, that's fine. It includes a plan. It includes an aim. And that, they're two really important components of a strategy. It doesn't quite go far enough. So I thought I'd look at a business dictionary. And that goes a little bit farther. We've still got a plan or a method. We've still got a goal or a solution. Uh, this goes a little bit further because it starts talking about marshalling resources and how you're going to achieve your goal through your plan. You need resources to do that, right? So um, it goes a bit further, but not quite far enough. Now, when I was putting all of this together, I went wandering down a couple of rabbit holes, and I'm going to take you down those rabbit holes with me. Um, and I kind of apologize and kind of don't, because they're perhaps the most interesting thing about this talk. So... Uh, bear with me. Tactics, also important. Business Dictionary says, see also tactics. So I thought, okay. When I was talking to, um, to Danny about this, he said, oh, I'm never quite sure what the difference is between strategy and tactics. So I thought, oh, that's an interesting point. Let's talk about the difference between strategy and tactics. I started with Google before, so I'll carry on with Google now. Uh, so Google says, an action or strategy carefully planned to achieve a specific end. I'm like, Hang on. So tactics are strategy. I'm like, Thanks, Google. That's no help at all. Um, so I went to another dictionary, Cambridge Dictionary. Tactics, a planned way of doing something. I'm like, oh, great. Still not particularly helpful. So I expanded my search to business tactics and thought maybe that will help. And this is what Asana said. And the only reason I've included Asana's Definition is because it was the first one in my Google search that I thought made it sound a bit better. It was on the second page of the Google search, and whoever goes that far, but I had to. Um, so Asana says, while strategy is the action plan that takes you where you want to go, the tactics are the individual steps and actions that will get you there. Um, and then in a business context, the specific actions teams take to implement the initiatives outlined in the strategy. I quite like that. Uh, definition of tactics, so I put that there. And this is where I'm going down my rabbit hole. So while I was thinking about tactics, it meant I was gazing at that word for an awfully long time, and the more I looked at it, the more weird it looked, and I thought, wow, tactics. And what it made me think of was Tic Tacs. <laughs> Why wouldn't it? And I thought, oh, I wonder if Tic Tacs are called Tic Tacs because of a tactic. Uh, so then I went off Googling down my, uh, my rabbit hole, um, and I can tell you that Tic Tacs, um, when they were launched in 1969, which makes them the same age as me, were called Refreshing Mints, which uh, <laughs> clearly is some product creativity going on on that day. Um, that name didn't last very long for some reason. So. 
1970, the name was changed to Tic Tacs, and it's an onomatopoeic name for the noise the lid makes when you open and close it. So I'm very pleased that I've got the word onomatopoeic into a presentation. Um, <laughs> tactics have a Greek root, taxos, meaning uh, organized. So anyway, back up out of my, uh, out of my rabbit hole. Um, so sticking with strategy and tactics and how those two things work together, um, there's a hierarchy of strategy. And you know, Google's definition was spectacularly useless when I was trying to come up with a good way of saying what tactics were. But it really did illustrate the point well um, that tactics and strategy um, are kind of interchangeable depending on your point of view and the focus, you know, the, the, the point of focus that you're looking at them from. Uh, so within, you know, any business is likely to have a number of, um, a number of hierarchies within it. It could be a project, a department, business, corporate. You can go further on, but I think it becomes a bit tenuous if you, if you go higher up and start talking about global things. But um, within, a, within, an ind within a business, you're likely to have at least a couple of hierarchies, and one person's strategy is going to be another person's tactics, right? So a CEO might have a goal of making, uh, you know, lots of money for the shareholders. She might have a number of uh, strategies. One of those is to deliver high-quality consultancy with a high profit margin. One of her tactics might be driving down operating costs. Um, and that's, that's it for that person. They go, right, we need to drive down operating costs. So I'm going to talk to my uh, operations director. Uh, the operations director, that's no longer a tactic for that person. That becomes a strategy that they have to develop. So it's definitely worth remembering when you're talking about strategy and tactics that it depends on who you are and the point of view that you're coming from. So that's strategy. Uh, we're going to go into strategy in a bit more detail, so don't think, you know, that was rubbish, that I don't know any more about strategy than I did before, but I'm going to break it down a bit more later. But um, adding UX into the mix. Still sticking with definitions, because they can be useful, um, but individual people's definitions rather than dictionary definitions this time. So, uh, Nilsson Norman already been uh, quoted once today as being particularly useful. Um, a UX strategy is a plan of actions designed to reach an improved future state of the organization's user experience over an established period of time. Uh, Jim Kalbach, it's about uncovering key challenges in a situation and devising a way of coordinating effort. And Robert Hochman, UX strategy entails researching that's really important, right? UX must involve researching, otherwise there's no you. Um, and recognizing constraints and concerns. Hooray, somebody's mentioned constraints and brought that into the mix. Uh, and painting a big red target on the wall. That's your goal. So that everyone involved can make decisions that serve researched, vetted, and defined objectives. So um, I like that definition. I think it's, it's pretty much there, but there's one really key thing that's missing for me in that definition. Um, and Jane Levy, who has written the only book, I think, on UX strategy, or certainly one of the few, um, it's a good book if it's something that you want to dig into a bit more. So she says, UX strategy is the intersection between user experience design and business strategy. And I think that is the key point that lots of the other definitions miss. Um, is that UX strategy on its own is not meaningless, but not as powerful as if you combine it with the product strategy or the business strategy. They have to work together um, in order to be effective. It's really tempting to think, oh, UX is everything. I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to focus on the user and what they want, and everything I do is going to be in pursuit of, um, of my user and making their life lovely. But if that takes you away from the product goals or the business goals, you're going to end up in a world of pain and not be heard in the organization. So, um, yeah, Jane Levy is uh, uh, great at recognizing that and looking at how the two things work together. And I might mention it once or twice more as we go along. 
So why we need a UX strategy? I mean, it might seem obvious, um, but let's um, break it down a little bit. We want to create everything good for our customers, but consumer behavior is changing quickly and it's difficult to predict. And that just seems to be coming more and more the case. If you don't involve your users in your business strategy, then you're going to end up developing something that your users don't want. And you need to do that regularly and keep on with it because it changes quickly. There are more touch points and adoption is quicker. So um, user experience, preaching to the converted, it's not just about my interaction with this website or app, it's about uh, all the anticipation that comes before that, all the fulfillment that comes after it, every touch point um, is, is the user experience. Adoption is quicker, people are moving faster, their expectations are higher. They don't just want usability, they want, um, they want to be emotionally engaged, they want to love it, they will go somewhere else really quickly if they don't. It provides direction for all aspects of the design, hopefully resulting in less rework. If you're all moving in the same direction, um, you won't have to do it again, probably. That's the plan anyway. Um, and again, because I'm going to keep saying it, to ensure that UX design and business strategy are aligned. And UX strategy is the thing that can help tie together UX design and the business or product strategy. So thinking about how they work together, and I think there is some confusion over what is product strategy and what is UX strategy. Are they the same thing? Are they different? Is UX strategy even a thing? So um, as I said, UX strategy, it can exist in isolation, but not if it's going to be effective. It needs to support and work alongside business goals um, at any of those four levels that we looked at. Uh, and it's not a fight. It might seem like a fight, and I'm sure we've all been in meetings where you feel like you're battling with the product people or you feel like you're battling with the UX people that you want different things. Um, to be successful, they need to work together. So just looking a bit more at the relationship between UX strategy and business strategy, I've just pulled out a few points where we can look at what the difference is and what the similarity is. So opportunity is one. Uh, product strategy focuses on the business elements of that product. It identifies gaps in the market. The UX strategy, still looking at opportunity, but what are the opportunity in changing user behavior? What opportunities are there to meet the needs of the user? Um, and what opportunity is there to create an engaging and compelling experience? Thinking about customers, product strategy is about acquisition. How can we bring customers to the product? UX strategy, what do we do with those customers once we've got them? Um, it's about retention and conversion. How do we encourage them to buy? How do we encourage them to return and buy more? And how do we encourage them to recommend to their friends that they buy as well? So revenue. Product strategy might be looking at lowering the production costs. How do we create the thing? Um, how do we know how much to charge for the thing? UX strategy is much more about understanding user needs and anticipating, again, their changing behavior uh, and creating the experience that's going to, to engage and compel. And competitors, always important in creating a strategy. Uh, product looking at cost of availability and functionality. And UX strategy, again, looking at the experience, the ease of use. So it's really focused on the customers, but working with the product strategy to make sure that it's a, um, it's a balance, it's a two-sided thing to achieve uh, success for your product or your business. So thinking about we know, we know why we want one. We kind of know the difference. We've come up with um, a, a bit of a definition. I'm just going to spend a little time talking about the, um, the framework that we use when we're creating strategy for our clients. 
Um, it's quite a simple model. It's got a few things in it. I'm going to go through them one at a time. There'll be other things, and it might not be as simple as it, as it looks, and there'll be other complexities that come in. But it stands us in good stead to, um, to at least have something to build around. Uh, so what goes into a strategy? Well, you need the current state. You need to understand where you are now. For a UX strategy, that's going to involve a lot of research with your customers. You need to understand what their pain points are, what their... Uh, ambitions are, what their anxieties are, how are they getting on with the, the product now, and how is it fulfilling those needs? You need to understand um, the business drivers, and this is where the, the business strategy is really key in your UX strategy. You need to understand what the, what the drivers are, what the brand strategy is, all of that, um, the, the stuff that we just covered previously as well. So where do we want to be? We know where we are. We know what our drivers are. What's our goal? What's our desired state? Where do we want to be? And once we know where we are and where we want to be, we need to have a plan of how to get there. And that was, that was kind of where it stopped for those uh, definitions that we looked at at the beginning. But um, there's definitely much more to it um, than that. We need to understand the constraints and the barriers to progress. We want to understand what might stop us or who might stop us. Um, we also need to know whether we're on track. We had an idea about where we wanted to be. As we go along, is that still the right place for us to be? Um, we need to take that back to our customers and make sure that the design decisions that we're making on behalf of um, them to create the experience are still the right design decisions and that we've interpreted them correctly and created a design that meets those needs. Uh, so just uh, whizzing through each of those um, in a bit more detail and you can see if you can work out why I've chosen the images that I have. So what is the business or product strategy? So I've included in these the sort of questions that you could be asking as you're building your strategy. What what needs to be included in those sections. So what's your target market position? And what are your brand values? Uh, who are you aiming this product at? Who's going to buy it and use it? Is it the people that you think it's going to be? Um, or is it the actual people? And we've certainly worked with plenty of clients who thought that they were selling to, you know, we'd recruit people for, uh, that we know were using their products. And they'd say, they're not our customers because our customers are, richer, cleverer, better. I'm like, yeah, but they are your customers. And there's, there's quite often a mismatch there. So make sure that you understand your customers um, and decide how you want your customers to feel about you or your product. Um, OK, so where are you now? You can really tell on this how dirty that person's fingernails are. It doesn't look, so, <laughs> doesn't look as bad on my screen. The designer who helped me with these slides said, do you want me to Photoshop them clean? And I went, no, you won't be able to tell, but you absolutely can tell. So <laughs> not my dirty fingernails. Um, OK, so where are you now? How well is your customer experience working? I assume it's going to be better, because otherwise you wouldn't be there. But you don't want to throw out all the good stuff as well. What are your customers' goals and needs and priorities? What's in their environment? And what's the current customer journey? Do you really understand that and how it's working? Um, where do you want to be? On top of that trick point. That would be nice. So uh, what's, what's your vision for the desired customer experience? And where has that come from? With a UX experience, you've understood your customers and their needs. So that should really be informing your, um, your desired experience. The product strategy may not be so focused on that desired experience, um, but your UX strategy really must be. And what will the future customer journey be? How is our customer journey going to change in order to achieve that? Have you got experience principles at every level that you can interpret and use to make sure that everything um, is consistent? And how are you going to add that value to your customers? So. To find the plan, you know where you are and you know where you want to be. You need to know what that gap is between now and then um, because 
that's how you're going to work out how to get there. How are you going to close those gaps? And there's lots of service design models that will um, break all of that down for you if you look for it. And anybody who talks about what they want to be is going to come up with 100 ideas. Everyone will have different ideas. How are you going to prioritize those? How are you going to make sure that what you're, uh, what you're delivering are the ones that will give you most value? Uh, you need to um, trade off uh, expensive and good and bad, um, and I think there's more in the next talk about that. How are you going to trade off those ideas to make sure that what you're delivering are going to give you the most value um, for your investment? I'm going to leave you to look at that. I learned something else while I was making this, uh, another little rabbit hole. So when I found this image, I looked at that and went, what are they wearing on their feet? What they're wearing on their feet are ski boots. People who do professional tug of war wear ski boots on their feet. I never knew. It makes complete sense, right? But um, anyway. <laughs> I've learned so much putting this talk together. Uh, you know where you are. You know where you're going. You've got a plan. That's great. If you haven't got resources to put your plan into place, you don't have a strategy. So. What resources do you need? Is there hardware? Is there software? Is there training? Do you need more people? Uh, all of that stuff. So you need to make sure you can get where you're going. It's not just an idea about where you want to go. You've got somebody who can actually put it into action and change it from being a plan into being a strategy. I like this one too. Um, you need to identify and mitigate the constraints. You need to understand the barriers that are going to stop you from achieving your goal. So what are the barriers to progress? And what or who, because it is often a who, is going to stop you reaching your goal? Um, and how are you going to fix that? What are you going to do now that you've identified your barriers to get rid of them, to get past them, and make sure that you can get to your goal. And you will never know all the barriers that are going to jump up. Um, I'm fairly sure David uh, didn't know about Goliath when he started. But um, how are you going to identify the new and unknown hurdles? And what process have you got in place for capturing them, monitoring them, coming up with a way of overcoming them? So every strategy should... Uh, Mitigate against known barriers and identify and log uh, unknown barriers. Um, and finally, monitoring progress. You need to know when you get there. And you need to know, as you're getting there, whether you're still heading in the right direction and whether the right direction is still right. Because... Strategies can last a long time, right? So you might set off, and then the world changes. Brexit happens, COVID happens, something smaller and less awful um, happens, but it might still knock you off. So you need to make sure that you're constantly adjusting your course and that where you're going is still the right place. Um, what are the KPIs um, for making sure that you're creating the best customer experience that you want? And what metrics? are you going to use? There are hundreds and hundreds of metrics that you can use and combine um, in order to make sure that you're there. So, all of them together, make a strategy. Um, is UX strategy a thing? It absolutely is a thing. But unless it's working alongside product or business strategy, it's not going to be effective. So UX strategy, yes, but make sure that you're listening to the product people. Product people, product strategy, great. It'll be much better if you uh, have a UX strategy alongside it. Thank you very much.